It all started because I had to use the bathroom. I was on my way home after having worked a double, and if I'd just gone before I left work, it wouldn't have been a problem. I was in such a hurry to get home because I knew I was going to have to come back and do it again in another eight hours. My relief had called out about 30 minutes before my shift ended, and though the manager was sympathetic, he said I had to stay unless I could find someone to work for me. Eight hours later, I staggered out the front door and into my car so I could go home and pass out just in enough time to do it again tomorrow. I was about halfway home when I got struck with the overwhelming urge to use the bathroom. It wasn't one of those you-can-hold-it kind of warnings. It was a full-blown, you're going to pee in the toilet or you're going to pee in your pants, but you got about two minutes or so to pull the trigger on this decision kind of warnings. I was about 20 minutes from home, and every place I passed was dark or locked up for the night. I just about decided to pull over to the side of the road when I saw the comfortable glow of a Dollar General sign in the distance. I pulled in, figuring it was probably still open, and if it was, I'd use the bathroom. If not, I guess I'd just go behind the building. It was about 10.30 at night, and I was surprised when I saw the open sign still lit up. Their big sign was different, well, a little different than I was used to at least. It wasn't the usual Dollar General logo, and as I got closer I saw that I'd pulled up into a Dollar General Beyond. Was it a type of Dollar General I was familiar with, but hey, beggars couldn't be choosers. I heard the comfortable ding of the automatic door as I walked inside, and it put me at ease personal speakers that some manager had rigged into the sound system were playing soft rock from one of the local stations, and the overhead fluorescents flickered and crackled in that way that makes you think they're just about to go out. The doors closed behind me with an almost ominous thump, but I shook it off as my bladder throbbed again. I found a tired-looking blonde woman standing behind the counter, and she seemed barely coherent. She didn't even look at me when I walked up, and... When I asked for the bathroom key, she turned her head minutely and offered me a fluorescent pink fly swatter with a key hooked to the bottom. I nearly ran to the bathroom, slipping the key in as I opened the door and paused in confusion. I opened the door to find another Dollar General. It was the same as when I went in. Same stagnant soft rock playing over the speakers, same fluorescent buzzing overhead, same tired salt and pepper flake linoleum that scuffed underfoot. It was a little mesmerizing as I stepped inside, the feeling of vertigo momentary but awful as I let the door snap shut behind me. My need to pee was forgotten as I looked around, and I would be too distracted to remember it for a little while. There were only two differences between this Dollar General and the one that I'd stepped out of. One was the disappearance of the blonde woman. I thought maybe I'd just gotten turned around somehow. Just a tired trick of the mind. Until I walked up to the counter. The woman was gone, but it wasn't something that seemed odd right away. She'd probably gone into the office to count the drawers down so she could go home. And I rang the bell on the desk as I called for help. I rang it a dozen or so times, calling loudly for someone, but... No one ever came out. I jumped the counter then, but the office behind it was empty. I checked the back, checked every aisle, but they were empty too. The second difference was that all the doors out of the store were locked and refused to budge. It was getting too weird by now, and I really wished I'd just peed behind the store. I went to the doors and pushed on them feeling for a lock or something, but there was nothing on the smooth surface. There was no mechanism to unlock the door either. The door was simply unmoving. I went into the back, meaning to go out the back door, but that door was also locked. After about 30 minutes of looking for a key or some way out, I sat down on the counter and decided maybe I'd been locked in for the night. The blonde had looked half brain dead and had probably just left and locked me in, if she had, then why leave the lights and the music on? I pondered it for a minute, but eventually I just shrugged and decided to call the police so they could come get me. 
I didn't want some cop to drive by on a routine patrol and think I was in here stealing. What's more, I had to be back at work before Dollar General opened. My boss was not going to be happy if I was late, and was unlikely to believe I was trapped in a Dollar General. So I took out my cell phone, dialed 911, but all I got was a weird static noise. I dialed a few more numbers, but each time, the static got louder and angrier. Eventually, I stopped trying. The 5G, however, still works, so I guess that's lucky for you guys. I decided that if I couldn't reach them, I would at least tell them what was going on. I opted to make a sign so that if anyone saw me through the windows, they wouldn't think I was robbing the place. I set about looking for something to make a sign with, and luckily for me, I was locked in a Dollar General. About two minutes later, I had a sign met at a construction paper taped to the door, letting everyone know that I was stuck in here and that I needed help. After that, I stepped away from the door, tried to decide what to do now. My bladder groaned again, and I remembered why I'd stopped here in the first place. I opened the door to the bathroom, and hey, wouldn't you know it, there was another Dollar General in there. I must have opened the bathroom door and stepped through about four times before I just decided to go in the water fountain. My business completed, I decided to have a bite. I walked around, finding some cold sandwiches and chips, a soda, and a little ice cream, and I took it to the front. Self-checkout wouldn't work, so in the end, I just left some money on the counter and figured I'd pay the difference when they opened tomorrow. As I sat eating, the food balanced in my lap as the lawn chair I'd found allowed me to eat off of something other than the floor. I found myself feeling oddly uncomfortable. This wasn't the kind of place you were supposed to eat in. It was tantamount to camping in a car wash, and I felt like something was watching me as I munched my food. I'd set up near the door, and as I found my eyes straying back to it again and again, I noticed something else strange. I was pretty close to a busy road, and approaching midnight or not, I should have seen headlights of some kind by now. We were right next to a pretty busy highway, and... The idea that not so much as a log truck or a delivery vehicle had cruised by all night was kind of strange. It was then that I also noticed, after looking back at the door for about the 20th time in two minutes, my sign was gone. I left my food in the chair thinking maybe it had just fallen down, but it was nowhere to be found. The tape I had used to stick it there was gone too. The markers I left on the counter, even the package of poster board. It was all gone. I walked around saying hello again, thinking someone had come and found my mess before cleaning it up, but I was still alone in the store. I made a new sign and hung it up in the window, and as I returned to my slightly melted ice cream, I kept looking back at it. I looked at it mistrustfully, waiting for it to disappear again, but it stayed stuck to the door, just as the last one had, until... It had suddenly gone missing, that was. After finishing my little dinner, I grabbed some bedding from the end cap near the middle of the store and some chair pads from the same area. I figured I wouldn't get more than a few hours of sleep before someone came in and asked what the hell I thought I was doing and settled in to get a little shut-eye. I tried to send a text to my boss to let him know what was going on, but the text just sat there unsent. I sighed and closed my eyes getting comfy as I tried to fall asleep. I nodded off eventually and woke up ten hours later to much the same scene. It was a little concerning when I looked at my phone and saw how much time had passed. It was even more concerning when I realized the sun still wasn't up. No one had tried to call me. No one had arrived to ask me what I thought I was doing. And that was when I sat down to write this. As I said, the 5G seems to work very well, but but I can't so much as make a phone call from my phone. The outlets seem to work pretty good, and there's plenty of chargers here to keep my phone from dying. I don't seem to be in any danger of starving, either. I have food, water, and power, but no way out. I don't know how long I can stay here, or wherever I am, but it appears that I've found something incredible. Incredible and inescapable. <laughs> it's funny. 
My friends and I used to joke about the number of Dollar Generals in any given place. They always seemed to get closer and closer to each other, and once I made a joke about how one day I'd turn down an aisle and find myself in a completely different Dollar General. You know, enter the back area, a new Dollar General location. Fall through a hole in the floor, you'd drop right into a newly constructed Dollar General. We'd laugh about it over our beers, but it seems less funny now. I'll keep you all posted. I suppose this would count as my first day in the Dollar General Beyond, but I'll let you know if I discover anything new. If you come across one, I can't stress enough to avoid the Dollar General Beyond at all cost. If you do go inside one, for God's sake, don't go into the bathroom. There are forces at work here that I don't think anybody understands. You're still here. I thought you might be. Thanks for joining me for tonight's story. If your insatiable appetite for horror knows no bounds, might I suggest one of our playlists or one of our previous stories in the archive? There should be one appearing at the end of the story any minute now. And of course, if you're not subscribed, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Maybe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the spooky things that we do here. If you prefer your horror a little more analog, you can always pick up one of my books. There's a link below to my latest, and it'll take you to all the great things that I've posted on Amazon. For my book lovers in the audience, I always suggest coming on down to Patreon so you can become part of my ghostly reader tier and get a book anytime I write one, which is usually about twice a year. Speaking of my patrons, let's go ahead and thank them, shall we? Thanks to Unicorn Hollow for being our spooky ghost contributor. Thanks to Janet and Lady Vengeance for being our spooky skeleton tier contributors. Thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zeronin, Emily Coltsfoot, Stephanie Carrington, Marianne Schuler, Tyler Parker, and Jennifer Damron for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you. If you think you might like to support the show in a more monetary fashion, come on down to Patreon. I have many tiers. I'm sure you'll find one that suits you best. I always recommend the Ghostly Reader tier, since you get a signed book anytime I write one on your doorstep. But I have many tiers, and again, I'm sure you'll find one to suit you. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.